man sitting next to me told uh, his UCF players in the aftermath of last weekend's disappointing loss to Miami that now we have a six-game season. We're going to concentrate on one game at a time and go from there. And boy, howdy, did game number one turn up blackjack. A hugely impressive, reinvigorating 49-7 win at Rice on Saturday afternoon. Hello again, UCF fans. Welcome to another edition of UCF Sports Today with George O'Leary. That man's the coach. I'm Pat Clark. We're happy that you're here as well. George, congratulations. I know this one feels good. It really did. Great win for the players and uh, in all three phases, offense, defense, and the kicking game, special teams. So it was a, a good win, and uh, we finally got to the point where we made plays when we had to make them on, in all three phases. Uh, we throw numbers your way each week in the form of statistics. Uh, here are a couple of very interesting numbers from Saturday. 42 and 50. 42 represents the largest margin of road victory ever at UCF. And 50 is the number of road victories that this program now enjoys. How does it feel for you to be a part of history on a special day in Houston? Well, I'm not, you know, uh, more important, it was the first of the six games series yeah. that we're in. And I thought the kids took the challenge and went out and, and, and beat a Rice team that, you know, hadn't won a game. But, you know, it's still, they went out there and played very well and, and continuously throughout the 60 minutes. That's what I was looking for, not a first half or second half, uh, you know, deal. But, you know, they played the 60 minutes, so it was, you know, I was encouraging that way. Uh, we referenced already the, the disappointing loss to Miami last week. What was the week of workouts like as you got ready, George, to get back into Conference USA play? Well, I think the kids took the challenge. You know, they, they practice very well. I, our situation and problem has been in the past. I think we have ability to make plays. We just got to make a guy miss. And I thought we did that very well on Saturday. Well, 49-7 to as an impressive final score. We have plenty of pictures to show you. Of course, the game was not on TV. It was played out in Houston. So we'll share those pictures with you folks when we continue on UCF Sports Today with George O'Leary. Stay right there. UCF Sports Today with head coach George O'Leary is brought to you by Holler Classic, the official automotive group of the UCF Knights. Buy smart, be happy. Today's show is also presented in part by Bright House Networks. See how bright life can be. And Coca-Cola. Welcome to the Coke side of life. So 1975, the United States ranked third in the world in percentage. Must be the new guy. I guess you can say I was with you guys the whole time. New guy. UCF and the Central Florida Research Park have helped create 41,000 jobs and contributed about $3.3 billion to the regional economy. Three, and that's only new girl. So if it seems like your company's growing, it probably is. UCF stands for opportunity. ISP Sports is the exclusive worldwide marketer of UCF Athletics. Welcome back, everybody, to UCF Sports Today with George O'Leary in the wake of UCF's uh, very impressive 49-7 win at Rice on Saturday. I know that one of the bugaboos throughout the season, George, has been a slow start for your offense. Mm -hmm. uh, no worries about that <laughs> on Saturday. I mean, it was almost clear from the very first play from scrimmage, which you folks will see in just a few moments, that maybe this was going to go UCF's way, and then the second possession, and then the third possession. It was a very impressive start. It really was. I thought the first play, uh, A.J. made someone miss. And I tell you, a great blocking downfield. Rocky Ross got down and made a great effort, great block, and we got a 76-yard pass into the, uh, really a 76-yard run, really, uh, into the end zone. And, and then on the second series, which was perhaps even more impressive than the first play from scrimmage, a 14-play, 87-yard drive. This team has more and more of those as each game goes on. There's an interesting t statistic, uh, something like uh, uh, six scoring drives of 80 yards or longer in the past four games, George. In all of last year, there were only four of them. So yeah. that well, I, I, they're improving, I, I, you know, and I, I see it each week. And I think they're getting more confidence under the center. I, I think we're we're making people we're making plays when the opportunity presents itself. And and I, I thought the offensive line did did a really good job um, yesterday of, of really getting hats on people with some pressure defense. Adam, D did you sense that after that first scoring play on the very first play of the game? 
that everyone was suddenly lighter on their step. You know, and, and there was much more enthusiasm on the sideline, which generated that perhaps that next possession and then the following possession. It was, but you know, know what happens most times when you score quickly? <laughs> no, nothing else. Nothing else. <laughs> You've been a part of some of I've those games. I've been a part of it, yes, Well, I have. For, fortunately, this wasn't one. Let's head off to the highlights, and I know that UCF fans have been waiting for this because uh, most of you were not able to watch the game yesterday. It wasn't on TV, and here's that very first play from scrimmage, and George, you can see that A.J. Guyton does a lot of the work himself here. He really does. Here's this block by uh, Ross downfield. Great block, good follow of the block, and a great way to start the offense. So we're barely into the game, and already UCF with a 7 0 lead after the point. That now in the second possession, Brent Harvey with a nice 21 yard gain, 71 yards on the day for him on 12 carries. And this was another game where George, uh, you and your offense, able to give the ball to more people. Here's Brett Hodges carrying the ball one yard to finish off that drive. Uh, his first career touchdown, by the way, the second push gets him into the end zone for a touchdown. It, it really was. Uh, you know, uh, we were fortunate to get that one. And this is a good run here by Weaver and right down the side, good blocking at the point of attack. Ronnie Weaver with a 27-yard touchdown run. This was on UCF's third possession. Now we fast forward to the second period, a little trickeration on the part of UCF. Hodge is handing off to A.J. Guyton, who had nothing if not a huge day, a 36-yard touchdown pass to Kamar Aiken. Those two play catch a lot. And as I understand it, A.J. told Kamara that he was going to throw him a touchdown pass yesterday. How could he possibly have known that was going to happen? I, I don't know, but I tell you what, it was a, uh, we've been running that play as far as a sweep play, and it was a good call at that time. And I thought, uh, you know, Kamal uh, made great, uh, great catch on it. They had pretty good coverage on it with interference on the call. Can you talk a little bit about A.J. Guyton? I know he, he hampered with injuries last year, but what a... What a day, and it's clear that he's becoming a playmaker for you. He had four catches for 113 yards and the score. You saw the touchdown pass. He also returned a punt 38 yards. I mean, he was a three-tool guy for you yesterday. He really is. He's gotten better each week, and uh, again, I, I think he wants the ball in his hand, and, and we're having opportunities to get it to him. But uh, again, he helped us yesterday tremendously in the kicking game also as far as this you know, return game that we've been looking to get going. So. Uh, great day, and uh, he's, he's put a couple of them back to back now. Uh, we talk every now and again about getting leads at halftime. You're up 28 to nothing over Rice at halftime, thinking, of course, that you're going to extend it. At any point in your mind at halftime, were you thinking, well, perhaps a couple of scores from now, we're going to be able to get more kids into the game, and we're going to get to see some faces in game action that we can put on tape and evaluate on tape that we otherwise might not be able to do. Well, I, I remind him it was a 60-minute game, and you know we came here for one purpose to win, and not to play 30 minutes, but to play 60. And I never mentioned getting anybody in the game, but we did have a chance to play everybody, which was great for morale and great for the locker room, and I think great for the team itself. All right. Well, so it was a 28 to nothing halftime lead. As we go ahead and take a look at some second half highlights. This, by the way, was UCF's first halftime lead uh, this season. And here's Jarvis Gathers. We're going to see some great defensive pursuit, which you had all day. Uh, UCF coming into the game 11th in the nation in sacks. That's Jarvis Gathers and Darius Null with some great pursuit. Really did. Uh, I tell you, we had. I think we had five sacks, and we had probably three or four others uh, half a step away. Great play by Josh Robinson, the young freshman, on a pick interception. Now yeah, that's his second interception of the year, and he returns at 24 yards for a score. Rob Calabrese is getting into the game, and this is a pass to Jamar Newsom, who does some great work on his way into the end zone from 46 yards out, and that made it 42 to nothing. It really was. I was happy to see Rob get in the game and throw a couple of touchdown passes, and. Uh, Played with a little more poise that you expect to see there, which is very pleased. And George, here's some more defensive pursuit that ultimately leaves, uh, leads, I beg your pardon, to a fumble. But UCF recovers in Rice territory. You mentioned the five UCF sacks, five fumbles forced by the UCF defense as well. They recovered three of them. And here's Calabrese one more time outside 13 yards to Ricky K for a touchdown. And that finishes uh, the scoring at uh, 49 to 7, a most impressive performance from UCF on. Saturday, 49 points in one football game and an opportunity to get Rob Calabrese back into the game. He throws a couple of touchdown passes. And I'm wondering, George, if there's any way to gauge what this does for his confidence, because I think everyone knows that he may have lacked some of that when he was pulled in favor of Brett Hodges earlier in the season. What does uh, this opportunity and a couple of touchdown passes do 
for his mindset, do you think? Well, I think getting him and all the rest of the players in the game and play a good bit of the fourth quarter, um, yeah, I think, you know, it's not great for morale, and there's no question it helped Rob as far as, you know, uh, you know, when he gets the opportunity to go in there and get it done, that's what you want your quarterback to do. And he went out there and, and uh, made some good checks and, and threw the ball extremely well, I thought, and, and played with his feet underneath him. Okay, talk a little more about the running game on Saturday, George, will you? Because uh, Brent Harvey has been the guy who has carried much of the workload for you all season long. Some 30 carry games, you said you didn't want him touching 30 times. Well, he didn't have to. In fact, he only carried it uh, 12 times for 71 yards on Saturday. Uh, we saw Ronnie Weaver, five carries for 58 yards, and at the end of the game, Jonathan Davis, I think you even said in your post-game comments, we may have found another running back. He broke one off for 35 yards. So tell us about the running game and being able to get so many touches for so many different players on Saturday. Well, we went in the game, and, uh, you know, I, that's something I've been looking to get done is get everybody on tape and see what they can do. And uh, again, I, I thought, you know, Jonathan Davis at the end of the game, I think he ran had two carries for 44 yards and uh, but he's been one that's been very impressive he's been getting banged around on the show team field with the defense <laughs> for the last six weeks so you know he's someone that he's we earned it as he, he sure has and he's someone that we may have to look at in the future as far as helping us down the stretch well we talked about Rob Calabrese now talk a little bit about Brett Hodges who was 8 of 13 for 145 yards on the day yeah you know, very, very good game we had a little uh, slow down there in the third quarter there period as far as you know and and really we, we you know I think again I, I think Brent played a very very good game poise uh, directed the offense very well and third quarter I, I think we missed some opportunities that we could have had but I, I'm very pleased with him and how he's playing I, I think he plays uh, and he has a great respect for the team you know we had voted for team captains and and uh, you know, he wasn't a captain but he got a lot of votes and uh, for a first year guy that's tremendous yeah very cool 49 to 7 again was the final we'll talk a little more about this game as we wrap it up and also about the UCF athletic training staff. These kids are staying healthy in large part because of these people and we'll highlight them when we return on UCF Sports Today with George O'Leary. Stay right there. The Knights Kids Club presented by Chick-fil-A is an exciting new club just for kids 8th grade and under. Call 407-823-6165 or log on to UCFAthletics.com to join now. Rice the 24 on first down. Hodges will drop to throw. He'll throw the pass. Is caught far side. 30, 35 across the 40, 50 down the sideline for UCF. Still moving with a block. Inside the 20, to the 15, to the 10, 5. Touchdown UCF. One of uh, many great plays for UCF uh, in the 49 to 7 win at Rice on Saturday afternoon. We've talked about A.J. Guyton, but I have to tell you something because I've been here forever. He did something in the game on Saturday afternoon that had not been done since November of 1990. That's catching a touchdown pass and throwing a touchdown pass. Do you know who the last person was that did that? Yes, I do. Coach Becton. It was Sean Becton against yeah. Texas Southern in November of, of 1990. Sean's a, a good friend, a great assistant coach as well. Very impressive day for Guyton, very impressive for the Knights and the UCF defense. We talked about the Sacks, 11th in the nation last week. And can you talk a little bit more about the pursuit that these guys are, and, and not only that, but the different guys who are getting to the quarterback. It's not just one or two. You've got pressure coming from all over the place and a number of different fellas. I, I thought defensively played very well uh, against an offense that, you know, they – they haven't won a game, but they've been moving the ball on everybody. And I thought we were very aggressive. You know, the, the five sacks are big plays, but there was also 11 
tackles for losses, which I, I think is, you know that it means you you're moving to the ball and you're making plays. And again, I I think they're playing very stingy. And again, I think the big thing is is that the coverage is tightening up, and again. The pressure's getting on the quarterback, so they're playing well together, front and coverage right now. You touched on something in our last segment that I'd like for you to expand on just a little bit, and that is the captaincy situation on your team. Right. You know, your seniors are all captains at some point, but at some point, you, your team elects your permanent captains, and they elected Corey Hogue, Torrell Troop, and Rocky Ross. Can you talk about the honor that it is to be a captain? Oh, it is. I, what I do each year, I take the seniors, and we had 13 of them this year, and they each get to be uh, six games, and uh, they're all captains for a game, which I think is a great honor. And once I've gone through the senior class, as far as uh, captaincy for individual games, we have a vote by the team, and uh, they elected uh, Terrell Troop, as you said, uh, Rocky Ross and Corey Hogue as their captains, which, which is representation of the football team, and I thought they made outstanding choices. So your captains get bumps and bruises every now and again, so do the other members of the team, and when that happens, you have the athletic training staff. Take a look. We do a lot of preventive measures here at UCF. We do everything from prophylactic bracing to conditioning programs to maintenance programs, whether it's a hamstring or a shoulder, um, all of those sorts of things. We do pre-testing when they come in as freshmen so that we know their strength levels um, bilaterally on all their joints prior to participating. And I think they've done a great job of making sure I'm back, I get back on the field in time and, and their preventative measures to keep me from getting injured. You know, with my legs, I think it was more of catching it in time and getting me, you know, to the hospital. And just to have guys like those guys that go down, um, that are unable to finish the year, but can come back the next year and, and do as well as they have. So as an athletic trainer, that's something that we pride ourselves on and, and why we stay in this job and, and do what we do. I think that the athletes can always help the recovery process if they keep a positive attitude, if they come in every day wanting to work, um, wanting to do whatever we tell them to do, trusting us that we're telling them the right things to make the right decisions, uh, but it's all an attitude. Uh, I think the big thing they just say is, you know, get, make sure you're getting in and getting the treatment you need because if, if you don't, then you won't, you know, get back in the time, the time frame that, you know, they say you will. So you just got to make sure to keep a, you know, positive mindset and uh, just listen to what they, you know, have to say to you. A guy that comes in uh, with that positive attitude will get back on the field much faster than one that kind of fights the system or skips a day here and there and thinks it'll still be okay. It's definitely something that needs to be done on a continuous basis uh, with a lot of continuity. When they're injured, our goal is to get them back as safely and quickly as we can, um, but primarily their health is first and so we are there to evaluate, treat, and then decide what the best um, thing is for them from that point on, whether they can return to play, whether we need to seek uh, further attention or special tests. Uh, Coach is one of the best that I've ever worked with for in the business. Coach definitely trusts my staff, trusts myself to, to make those decisions on return to play. Um, so Coach just encourages me um, to do whatever I need to do to get them out again as quickly and fast, fast as I possibly can again, but keeping the athletes' health and well-being first and foremost in that process. Well, hopefully that will clear up some of the misnomers that people have about the athletic training staff. I think some people think that they just fill up the water bottles and supply the towels and wrap you if you have a bump or bruise. That's simply not the case. Not the case. Outstanding job by Mary and her, and her staff. And, you know, the hours they put in are, you know, are outstanding. They really, all, all hours on the phone with the athletes come on over at 7 o'clock in the morning, 6.30 in the morning, 8 o'clock at night to get a treatment. And then... I always tell the players, you know, you can't make the team in the tub. And you got to get healthy, get back on the field, and they do a great job of that. Well, you can't make the team in the tub, which leads to this next question. You know, we hear this saying, playing through pain. Well, I guess that there's probably some merit to that. But if you have an injury, you don't want it to get any worse. You want it to get better. And there are players who simply don't want to come off the field, and they fear that if they, if they go, they might find out that they have to miss a game or two. So how do you... How do you portray that to them, and how do your trainers portray it to the player that, look, if you've got an injury, you have to let us know? Well, I look. think the difference is you got to know the athlete. There's a big difference mm. between pain and injury, and I think as you get older, you understand what an injury is, and you understand <laughs> what pain is. you got to play with pain at times. That's the nature of the game. The game of football is a contact game, but, uh, again, the younger players are the ones. You know, the first question I ask every time when someone gets hurt, have you been hurt before? 
because it's how they react to the injury is most important. Mm. No pain for UCF on Saturday, an impressive 49 to 7 win at Rice. Now looking ahead to a Sunday evening, nationally televised game against Marshall. We'll talk about that when we come back on UCF Sports Today with George O'Leary. Be sure to visit Buffalo Wild Wings in Waterford Lakes every Thursday night from 7 to 8 p.m. during the season to hear the George O'Leary Radio Call-In Show. Here are your run for Ronald totals for the game. UCF had 465 yards of offense and seven touchdowns for a total donation to the Ronald McDonald House of $1,165. McDonald's, I'm loving it. Hey, welcome back everybody to UCF Sports Today with George O'Leary. The Knights looking ahead to a Sunday evening game uh, next week against Marshall. This will be a nationally televised game. And coach, if folks want football next Sunday night, They'll be watching you because there's no NFL game next Sunday night because of the World Series. So if you want a football fix, it's UCF Marshall. It's going to be a great game. Uh, both are in position where they, this game is very, very important to both squads. And again, the crowd noise, the home field advantage is big. I think that what you said to your players really did ring true after the loss to Miami. Six game season, one game at a time. We still, in a way, kind of have fate in our hands. You certainly do with regard to becoming bowl eligible. Now just two victories away from becoming bowl eligible. But there's still a chance that you could win the East Division of Conference USA. You're going to need a little help. But as long as you do your work. That's all you can worry about. Take care of your business. And again, I think with Chase and teams that have a loss, but I think they have to play each other. So, I mean, there's, you never know what's going to happen. 2007, we were the same record, 3-3, three and three, when we went into this top part of the year. So, you know, the players understand that, but they're taking one game at a time. And, uh, you know, they were real pleased yesterday, and we got to continue to go out and do a great job with men, with, with Marshall coming you always on want, Sunday. You always want the guys to bring the A game, but you're going to have a national TV audience. You really want to look sharp for them now on Sunday night. Well, you want to look sharp, whether it's TV, but I mean, in terms TV, of not. recruiting, I mean, you'll oh, have no a lot question. of lot of faces. That's why the stands need to be filled, and you know, that's that's what people pick up on is you know what's going on there, and I'm, I know our fan base will be there in support, and 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 the players really need that. Okay, and we'll continue to preview this game next Sunday on UCF Sports Today with George O'Leary. So until then, for the coach and everyone at UCF and ISP, I'm Pat Clark. So long, everybody. UCF Sports Today with head coach George O'Leary is brought to you by Holler Classic, the official automotive group of the UCF Knights. Buy smart, be happy. Today's show was also presented in part by Budweiser, the perfect balance of flavor and refreshment. Open up a world of taste. By the energy-saving conservation programs of Tico People's Gas. Syntex Homes. For a better way to a better home, visit Syntex.com.